All right, you new tube nerds. You guys were asking about a quick demo on the Steiner Off-Road High 10 radio unit. Now this is installed in a 2017 Ram Bighorn. Uh, the dealer that I actually bought this used from, uh, not the radio, the truck, uh, was actually a Hyundai dealership up here in Centennial and I bought it back in February. We're in November, it's the day after uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, the Uconnect 3 8.4 that this already had in it had a short which was causing a noise that sounded a lot like a dial-up modem trying to connect and it was only when the truck was off key was out of the ignition nothing was on uh, and it would be almost continuous uh, it would stop for a couple of minutes here and there and uh, you know I mean this was back in February where I bought it I paid you know more than I should have for the truck and the dealer that recognized it you know they were really cool about it they ended up having a tech install this for free uh which was really cool of them uh but anyway i picked it up it was done a couple days ago actually the day before thanksgiving and i'm gonna gonna run through just a couple things with it uh just to be clear he hooked it up correctly almost perfectly i mean everything stock works fine every control on this thing works exactly how it did when it had the stock radio, including all of the steering wheel controls, as well as the volume buttons on the back of the steering wheel and the tune controls. Um, and at first I thought that they did not hook up everything correctly because in the center console armrest, uh, everything is still stock. So the USB charger does not work anymore, uh, here in the armrest. Um, and I thought that they screwed something up initially. What they did was they actually, the tech actually disconnected the USB port, uh, the USB wire that actually runs from the back of the radio unit all the way up through the floor into the armrest. Um, he disconnected it and connected the multimedia USB wire that leads from the back of the radio. And he wired it into the top portion of the glove box. And as you can see, I have my uh, standard USB cable connected to it. And thinking about it, although it was the easy way to do it, if I was installing this radio, I would have actually done it the exact same way. Because there's that hole right here that actually leads into the back of the radio unit. Uh, if it was me installing it, I would have done the same thing. So, whatever. Um, the, only, the only downside with that is I don't have the additional... AV connections that run out and the HDMI connections that would normally run and be uh, modified in here. So I don't really care about that. Everything works on it just fine. Only thing I really wanted as an upgrade was for the noise to stop and I wanted Android Auto, which this has. Uh, I'm not going to get into the Android Auto features because most of you already know about Android Auto, um, but I know a lot of you guys were more interested in the Aircon, the HVAC. Uh, like I said, everything is laid out, uh, you know, control wise, everything is laid out exactly like stock. Everything works fine. Even the screen off button still works, which uh, I was kind of surprised because I already have a screen off function on this new radio unit. But here's the Aircon. Uh, this is so if I adjust it here, it comes up on the bottom of the screen, but I can also, if I remember, <laughs> I haven't had a chance to really play with it uh, very much, but I mean, there's the screen off button, climate right here. So when the climate comes up, I actually like this better than the Uconnect, like way better, um, because it's easier to, for me, uh, it, it just looks a little easier to manage. Um, You've got your basic button, you know, dash, dash vent, dash and floor, floor. Um, you know, you got your rear, at least my, for my truck, you got the rear and front defroster, max AC. So everything is still laid out relatively simple um, with the exception of the added on uh, picture, which is cool. It's not really super functional, but it's it's nice to see. Um, you know, you, you, you still got your power button on and off button in the same spot. 
uh, you know, turn it off. Uh, you go to the home button, go back to the, um, the, the basic layout. Uh, the navigation, I had stock navigation in this uh, for the Uconnect 3 nav. For whatever reason, it was not uh, it was not connected in this, which I don't really care. Um, I mean, there might be a way to activate it where I don't have to connect any wires. I'm not sure. I just have to go through it again. Uh, vehicle info, which is I thought was kind of cool, um, because the truck's not running, it's not going to give you everything. There is no off-road pages because this is not a Jeep, so it did not come factory with the off-road pages, so you don't get it here in the RAM. I think if you were to upgrade this in like an older Rebel 1500, I think I believe you would get it. Um, but because anyway, because this isn't running right now, it's not going to show the current uh, uh, the current gauges or current temperatures and everything. I mean, you'll see like the last readout, I believe. This is the last readout. Yeah, because there's no oil pressure. Uh, preset 2. Ignition timing, which is... This was actually kind of cool. I, I've never seen uh, fuel pressure at load or ignition timing on this. Uh, barometric pressure, even though normally you'd see that in the off-road pages. It doesn't have that uh, in, the, in the regular Uconnect 3, uh, especially when you don't have off-road pages. So that was kind of cool. Uh, well... I can do stuff. Oops. Horsepower? Get out of here. <laughs> See, like, I haven't even played with this yet, and here I am. <laughs> okay, I might want to keep an eye on that later on. <laughs> Engine torque? Really? Huh. Battery voltage, fuel pressure, which I already have there. Uh, engine load calculate. Ooh. Cool. So back to barometric pressure. So again, you don't have the off-road performance or off-road pages, but it is kind of cool that you can change certain things. Performance, uh, RPMs, uh, tachometer, speedometer, uh, vehicle info. I think it's just, yeah, it's just uh, tire pressure. Uh, user settings, tire pressure threshold. Uh, so like I said, overall, it's actually a really cool uh, upgrade. Um, Again, I got this for free as an upgrade from the dealership because they, you know, I paid full prices for a, for a used truck and uh, had the radio issue and they were nice enough to switch it out for me. Um, I thought they were going to give me like a real cheap one, uh, but this is actually a really nice upgrade. The camera, the only thing I don't like about this screen is because the size of it, the resolution isn't as good as you would think. Uh, okay, so here's the the backup camera. Um, honestly, it's just as good as it was at stock. And so even though I said the screen resolution isn't that great, uh, that's only because of the size. Overall, it's actually a very nice radio upgrade. And if I were considering paying for a premium upgrade, um, this would be on the top five on the list, hands down. Um, trying to think what else, uh, radio, it's on mute. I don't think, do I, I think I actually have to hit the radio. There we go. So you can, for volume, for volume, you can easily, you can use the stock uh, control or the, the one that's actually on the new radio itself. Um, one thing, the last thing I'll point out, I'll say, is that there is definitely a better sound quality that comes from this and the stock, that goes to the spot, stock speakers. Um, I don't have the Alpine system, um, or I didn't have the Alpine system, I should say. And this definitely sounds a little better radio quality wise compared to my Uconnect system. And I don't even think, I have to double check here. Um, I don't think I even have HD radio in this, but I swear it sound, this sounds better than when it was on the HD setting in the Uconnect 3 radio. Um, I could be wrong. It, it might already have HD, and it's it's non-selectable. I could be completely wrong about that, so it might have it. Um, but all as I know is the bass is a little deeper, the mids are a little clearer, and the highs are pretty good. Um, they're just as clear. Uh, so, like I said, radio quality is definitely improved. Is it a night and day difference? Mm, no, but it's definitely better for having the stock speakers and no 
uh, no amp or um, no subwoofer in the back. So I'm happy with it. I like it. Uh, I don't think there's really anything else that I can show you on here that's any different from, you know, another high-end aftermarket radio. Uh, the only thing I haven't checked is actually the voice control, uh, voice recognition. So let's go ahead and try it. <laughs> 